Hey everybody, me Nav. We're going to be using the Sobek build that I recently showcased along with Zaku. Uh, this is a really cool synergy and I'm excited to show it to you guys. Alright, so to start, the Archon Shards. Not really super important, but they are very much convenience pieces. The ones that I have selected are specifically for energy capacity and casting speed, and it just kind of helps not have to mod for those in the build, and opens up a lot of variety for the rest of the kit. Up next we have the Zaku build, and the Zaku build is actually pretty straightforward. We have a lot of power strength on it to scale our Breach Surge and our Zada's Whisper up really, really high. We don't need them to scale really, really high, but it makes the build a lot easier to use and a lot more fun to run. Um, we're using Breach Surge instead of another damage multiplier because we can't use other damage multipliers. Zada's Whisper takes that slot from us. But also, other damage multipliers don't actually really matter. The only damage bonus we care about is faction damage, which we can get on our weapon. Having Rhino's Roar would be cool, but again, we can't, so we don't use it. I'm going to be explaining the mechanics of what's going on later in the video during the actual gameplay because it's survival footage. I did a survival run for this and it's not exactly interesting. There's no demolist, there's no big enemy that goes bewop, bewop, bam, 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 and that kind of sucks and doesn't make the video flow very good. So I'm going to leave all the really complicated technical stuff for the actual run. These are the builds that I used though, uh, except for this cat. I actually used my regular cat instead of the sly one, uh, because I forgot. Don't be mad at me. Okay, it's the later part of the video where I'm going to get into the nerd technical shit, so here we go. Zada's Whisper and Acid Shells, the mod, have a very unique relationship, as do all other mods that have an enemy percentage detonation mechanic. You can even achieve this by, you know, using the uh, Saxum mod set and using something like the Caliban Stomp and then detonating enemies that way. It's a bit janky and it's a bit clunky and ragdolled enemies have really weird hitboxes, so it's typically not used, but I do have a Garuda build that utilizes that. We're getting ahead of ourselves though. Why is enemy percentage health and extra hit so important? What is the relationship between them and why have I toted this as the unstoppable shotgun and why is this build so gosh darn good? The simple answer is that it's complicated, and the complicated answer isn't that much easier. Basically, extra hits are abilities that will copy the damage instance from your weapon, but also run them through the same mod calculations that your weapon currently underwent with a few janks and a few quirks. So for example, the Saren video I just recently did, where I used Saren's Toxic Lash with the dual Tox Assistant Karnan to get a large Toxin bonus. Basically, the Toxin mods were double dipping, the Faction mods were triple dipping, and that has to do with the extra hits mechanic of replicating your weapon's uh, damage instances and then running them through mod calculations again. Uh, all extra hits function this way, and that's what makes them so silly and so broken. Anything that is classified as an extra hit, uh, of which we have two for Warframes and a couple for Daviri, just really take every form of scaling and every semblance of reason and throw it out the window. There's certain janky mechanics with uh, Zada's Whisper specifically, like it double dips on the Latum bonus, the, the Latum and Karnan bonuses that give like 2000% damage, that counts twice with Zada's Whisper. Uh, it also takes the deadhead bonus, and it counts that twice. 
there's just a bunch of crazy shenanigans and math that goes into it. And I'm not just going to hit you with the source, trust me, bro. I did do the math, and I have it in a big, sexy calculator with all the numbers and everything broken apart and categorized. And I'll be linking that in a pinned comment at the, you know, underneath the video, pinned comments, where all the pinned comments usually are. You'll be able to check it and see the math for yourself, and also play with some of the variables, power, strength, etc., and kind of see, you know, what each bonus does to each part of the build. The important things to note for the build is that your direct damage bonuses and your crit bonuses do not count for the acid shell's detonation. What that means is when we're making a build that is solely focused on acid shells, we don't care about pretty much anything other than the faction damage. The faction damage is the only thing that matters, but when we get extra hits into the mix, things change. We also care about the elemental bonus, because the elemental bonus does count for both Zada's Whisper and for Saren's Toxin Lash. What this means is when we are shooting at an enemy and we detonate acid shells by killing an enemy and it deals that damage in a radius to all the enemies around it, there are two bonuses that scale it now as opposed to one. Normally, the only way to scale it is with that faction damage, but when using the extra hits, we can use our elemental bonuses as well. This changes things by a lot, and the reason this happens is because your elemental bonus is converted when you're using an extra hit. If I have corrosive damage on my shotgun or blast damage, my Zada's Whisper will take that elemental bonus, but it will convert it into void damage instead. This is just super, super broken, and it leads to a lot of jank and a lot of shenanigans where we get numbers way bigger than what we're supposed to be getting. Now, obviously, this isn't a perfectly broken and overpowered system. We still have to be able to kill enemies with the Sobek, and that direct damage bonus that we don't have for our detonation is still incredibly important for the regular shot hit and for the Sobek itself. We want the direct damage bonus to also scale really, really high, so our mods, like our Deadhead, which also again double dips with the Zada's Whisper, which makes it just way easier to use, and our uh, Point Blanks and all of those other, you know, direct damage modifiers are also still going to be really, really important. You don't want to ignore them with this build, however, the most important bonuses are going to be your elemental and your faction bonuses, specifically when it comes to scaling the detonation. So just to kind of reiterate and make sure that I'm as clear as possible, because I know this is a complicated and really difficult mechanic to wrap your brains around, when you shoot an enemy with a weapon, the extra hit replicates the damage and also runs it through mod calculation. Certain things will double dip based on what ability it is between Zada's Whisper and Toxic Lash. Different bonuses can apply uh, either twice or not at all, and so it's really up to you to kind of do the research or just kind of know what works, uh, because DE doesn't tell you, that's for darn sure. Uh, and on top of that, specifically for our mechanic that we're using, which is the Acid Shell's enemy HP detonation, the things that do count are the elemental bonus and the faction bonus. For the Sobek shotgun itself, as well as the Zada's Whisper extra hit, we really care about that direct damage bonus and the elemental and faction because that is the best way to scale our Zada's Whisper to kill things at super high level. The Sobek itself is putting in work and it is doing a large chunk of damage, but the majority of the damage is going to be coming from that extra hit because of the bonuses we have at play, because of the things like Zaku's fourth ability giving bonus damage, and because of Breach Surge. I didn't really talk too much about Breach Surge and why it's so important, but basically, vulnerability multipliers are pretty much the only ones that we get to play with, and that kind of reduces our options down to using Equinox, which gives the enemies a speed bonus and has a shorter range, and Breach Surge, which is just better. In, like, every conceivable way. I really wish they would actually buff the Equinox ability in the Helminth system to let you use both the Sleep and the Damage Vulnerability at the same time, like you can with regular Equinox. I think that it would be a really unique uh, spin on that ability, because it's a really strong ability, uh, and it just kind of sucks that it loses in raw power to Breach Surge. Maybe buff it a little bit, DE. Please. Please buff Equinox. She needs it. This is off topic now. This is this has nothing to do with the Sobek run anymore. This is just a cry for help. Please buff Equinox and please don't nerf Shield Gate. He says a day before the Shield Gate changes. Smile.
The other things I didn't really explain is why we're using Equinox in particular, or Equinox, good lord, <laughs> I've got Equinox on the brain, why we're using Zaku in particular, not Equinox. Um, the reason we're using Zaku in particular is because of the armor strip. Something that I didn't talk about is that HP detonation that comes from the Sobek is reduced by armor, and quite significantly. This kind of limits your options to what you can use. Uh, something like Garuda can ignore this because Garuda can turn the damage into Slash, which ignores armor. And, you know, other frames like Saren can utilize this really well because you can turn it into a toxic damage over time effect and that damage over time is super, super strongies. But realistically, if you want to try using the Sobek plus Zada's Whisper on another frame, that other frame has to also be able to armor strip. And this definitely means that you can absolutely use it on frames like Styanax and on frames like, I guess, the new Hydroid. Hydroid's getting an armor strip rework, so, and he gets corrosive bonus. Hey, you know what? Hydroid could be really good with the Sobek and Zada's Whisper. There's also a decent chunk of strategy that goes into using uh, the Sobek in this manner. Uh, one of the most important things, and probably the thing that you'll see that I do a lot of, is I don't actually prioritize shooting the heavy units. Uh, instead, I really prioritize shooting whatever the squishiest unit is when I'm using this strategy. This kind of goes counterintuitive to what you would expect with an enemy HP detonation. You'd think that you'd want to shoot the heaviest duty target so that the HP explodes and, you know, will kill all the squishy units. But realistically, because of the multiplication that's happening, it's actually more valuable for you to shoot the squishy targets and start a chain reaction, detonating all the squishy targets to kill the one big dude. To be completely candid, that's also not always the case. It's kind of a give or take, and it's very situational. Like I said, there's a lot of strategy that I can't really get into. It's kind of crazy that I made a 15 minute long video, and I just can't explain everything there is to explain, because there's just so much. It really is kind of complicated. The best advice I can actually give you for developing a strategy with the Sobek is to just play with it yourself and get the feel for it. There's kind of a rhythm to it that you kind of get used to, and it's not really all that deep, it's not all that hard, it's just that it's really weird to explain. And realistically, if you're gonna, if you're gonna use the Sobek, you're gonna figure it out, right? Like, it's not that hard. I will say, for my run, the things that kept cucking me the hardest and the things that made this so frustrating was actually the goddamn ancient healer units, because they put overguard on enemies, and for some reason it turns off your Zaku 3. So if you want to put your third ability on an enemy, you have to wait for an enemy to get blasted with overguard and then remove the overguard so that way you can put it on the enemy. It's really annoying. But I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys take care, uh, you know, take care of yourselves and all that fun stuff. Don't run for a nine hour mission in the void, unless you really want to, I guess. I, I didn't even do it when there was a fisher, so I didn't really get anything out of it. But uh, I'm gonna leave you guys to enjoy this last chunk of footage. Uh, let me know if you guys want to see like the full like run. I don't have like all five, nine hours of it recorded, but I do have about like 45 minutes of footage or so. But yeah, thanks for watching. Like, sub, comment, hit the buttons, share with your friends. Cool stuff. Take care. Guys, love yourself. That's all I gotta say. If you look in the mirror and hate yourself, love your self. Yes, you should love yourself now. Yes, you should. Because I do.